Rub up your engines! And there it is. The Fiat 500. Now, I had to walk down the street to take a picture of one in the background because none of my customers were dumb enough to actually buy a Fiat 500 and keep it any length of time. Because as a mechanic, let me tell you, they are horrible cars. Mechanically, they are piles of junk. I had a customer, he bought one for his daughter to go to college in, right? She's out of high school, he buys her a Fiat 500. She's driving to college, which is like 400 miles away. The car got 200 miles and the engine blew up. That is just the tip of the iceberg for these Fiat 500s. Now, if you don't listen to Scotty and you're gonna go out and buy one, you better hurry up. 2019 is the last year model they're selling in the United States. They're pulling out of the United States with them now, so. Now, somehow in the United States, they sold about 44,000 of them in their high water mark, which was 2012. But last year, they only sold 4,300 of them in the whole country. So now Fiat's pulling out. The amazing thing is, that they sold any of them here. I'm assuming a lot of them are younger people because decades ago they sold Fiat to the United States. They had such a bad reputation for being clunkers that Fiat pulled out of the United States. Well, then they came back in again after they bought Chrysler. People think they're cute. I guess that's how they sold them. They were cute looking. Even my wife said, oh, those are really cute. So I said, okay, hey, let's take one for a drive. So we went to the dealer and we tried one out. And she said, feel every bump. It has no acceleration. Because she only drives an automatic. So she got in the automatic one, which is slow as dirt. She said, oh, but they're so cute. But just like puppies, cuteness only lasts so long. Since they went from selling 44,000 of them in 2012 to selling... 4,300 or so, 2018, they've obviously been a failure. Now, being a mechanic, I forecast that they're gonna be a failure in the United States anyways. It's amazing to me that they could sell any because if you take the last year's model of Fiat 500, they started at about $17,000 for that tiny little car. For $1,000 more, the Toyota Corolla started at that price. A Toyota Corolla that can last hundreds of thousands of miles, not just thousands of miles like the Fiat. I'm amazed they sold any in the United States. Because after all, Fiat and Italian company, Italians are not known for quality cars that last a long time. Sporty, look cool, yeah, but not things that last a long time. And to make it even worse, the Fiat 500s, they were made in Poland or most of the American ones, they were made in Mexico. So you got Poland and Mexico making them. Not exactly two countries known for high quality products. <laughs> And I kind of love the ironic fact that they used Charlie Sheen driving one around in a party inside a mansion, right? So I guess they're saying, hey, the only people that are going to drive these cars are people that are totally out of it on drugs that can't make logical decisions at all. And I guess since there's only one Charlie Sheen, they quickly find out that there weren't a lot of people like him that were going to come out and buy one of these. <laughs> Now, how did all this Fiat 500 come about? Well, the original one, in 1957, the Fiat 500 was called the Fiat 500 because it had a 500cc engine that put out 22 horsepower. Basically, it was made as a little bitty commuter car for Italy and Europe where they got tiny streets, tiny parking spaces, and at a top speed of 59 miles an hour. But I had the pleasure, or whatever you want to call it, of driving one a few years back. You got that thing up to 58 miles an hour, it was shaking and rattling. You would think that your life is going to be in dire straits if anybody gets near you and knocks it over or the wind blows it over. There were horrible cars at high speed. But then Fiat buys Chrysler, and they decided they're going to bring back the Fiat 500. But they were no longer the cheap little runabout. They were only a thousand bucks cheaper than a Corolla, a car that they sold over 40 million of them here in the United States. They suckered people because they were cute and they thought, oh, let's try this. But then the sales just kept going down and down and down because people were finding out, hey, these are crappy little cars. And the weird thing is, for their size, here in the United States, they weren't even that great on gas mileage for a little micro car. The Toyota Corolla of the same year, take 2018, it actually gets two miles a gallon better gas mileage on a highway than that little tiny Fiat 500. Doesn't you have a car where you can fit a whole family in? It went from being an inexpensive car that got really great gas mileage to a car that wasn't that inexpensive, that didn't get fantastic gas mileage for its size, but it still rode like a tiny micro car. Compared to the Fiat 500, the Toyota Corolla rides like an old-fashioned Cadillac. And like I said earlier, they are not 
not dependable cars. Another one at the beginning of the video that I showed. It's a neighbor. This is downtown Houston. People don't drive much in their cars. And I looked at that car. She, she got a car that's five years old. This thing's got like 4,500 miles on it. So you're not really putting any real test on that particular car. But they're definitely not a car you're going to get in and drive from Houston to LA and back in. <laughs> You can forget that. Brain trauma from all the bumps going down the road and those little things. And the Fiat 500 sold here in the United States. They're made in Mexico. They're made in Mexico in the old Chrysler plant. The Dodge Neon. They were made down there in Mexico Chrysler plants too. And they had horrendous quality control. Well, these Fiat 500s, if anything, are even worse than those are. The production quality of these cars was pretty much garbage. Cheap alloy wheels that would easily chip or just break and all the air comes out if you bump against the curb. Two engines and transmissions that go out. Let's face it, in the United States, most of these Fiat 500s sold in the United States are automatics. They were bad enough with the standard, but with an automatic, they could barely get out of their own way. And that is when they were actually working. When the transmissions broke, of course, then they didn't get out of anybody's way. They just sat there and didn't go anywhere. And the Fiat 500s had lots of recalls. Well, one real big recall was in the steering wiring. These things have electronic power steering and they had a recall for that. But the wiring was wrong and that they shorted out. That, that doesn't surprise me because when I was a young mechanic everybody called them fix it again Tony for Fiat because their electronic systems were garbage. Well they obviously haven't evolved out of that very well because they're still doing it. If you got electronic power steering and the stuff doesn't work. Yet another reason not to buy a Fiat 500. Many mechanics don't know how to work on them. There weren't that many guys that wanted to work on them. If you've ever had experience at Chrysler dealers getting stuff fixed, there's enough problems there. Well, when Fiat took over, and now they're selling Fiat cars there too. The mechanics that work there, they're no experts on Fiats. Let me tell you, I got a friend who used to work at a Chrysler dealership when Fiat bought him. A year later, he quit because he said, I'm not working on this Italian junk. I've had it. And he left and started his own business. And in 2014 and 2015, the Fiat 500s with the 1.6 liter engines, they had such problems that some of them we weren't able to climb up hills. We got up the hills and it wouldn't make it. You had to give up and turn around and go the other way. <laughs> They had to redo the software for that. It's bad enough when they were making little cars with carburetors that were relatively simple and they still broke down all the time. But you put all this computer stuff on top of that, it's kind of a miracle that they sold as many Fiat 500s as they did. Kind of like a minor marketing miracle that they suckered even the amount of people that did buy them into buying these cars. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.